Absolutely miserable conditions. I'm here on the Madawaska River for the third year in a row. 2020, I was here in medium conditions, one of my first whitewater trips. 2021, I was here in high water. That was an absolute joy ride. 2022, I'm here in medium conditions, but here at the beginning of December. So it's almost freeze up. It's quite cold, it's rainy, terrible weather. Here with my buddy, Marty Morset, as well as with my brother, Max. We're gonna be doing some whitewater canoeing, bit of camping. I got a whole bunch of new gear that I'm here to test out, including this dry suit, my canoe, my tent. And uh, if it's not a fun one, it's at least gonna be an interesting one. So uh, come along with us for uh, some fun adventures. <laughs> fun adventure. Come on. Here's my new boat. Well, it's not new, it's, com it's very well used and loved. It's an Ocio Okio Dagger. It's a play boat and that's like a saddle that you sit in with knee straps. I can show you that a little bit later. But I'm going to put uh, gear in the front and back as opposed to airbags today because uh, I need to put my stuff somewhere. Like a glove! <laughs> Alright, well I'm trying this canoe out for the first time and I have no idea what I'm doing. This is so ridiculous! What a bad idea! Well, this is going to be uh, really interesting. I'm not, not exactly feeling that confident steering or doing anything with this boat. <laughs> I'm a little bit over my head. Thanks. Coming up on the first rapids here. I don't have the most confidence in myself, not still, but I have full confidence in myself that everything's gonna be alright. I feel like I have no control. It's like, it's like I'm just like guessing. The only thing that you need to worry about is if you lose control, if you can just hit it square, you'll always get out alive. A lot of the problems is people hit it sideways take, and then they get flipped. Oh, oh. If, you, if you hit it hard square, you can get away with a lot, like a lot. Come back. pumped about this tent. Yeah, when I like first learned about hot tenting uh, in 2020, when I was looking up hot tents, this is the tent that I looked up. Uh, this is the one that I've wanted since then. The Gamma 4 from Nortent. I feel very gracious that they sent it out to me. Uh, it's a really high quality tent from Norway. This is the four person version. And uh, yeah, pretty pumped to put the stove in it tonight. Oh. It's tight for four people, but it's good for two. With the stove, that's for sure. This is the T Brick Ultra from Pomali. This is one of their bigger stoves. I have the T Brick, which is just slightly too small for a four man tent here in Canada. I used it last year with Dylan. Took it down to like negative 26. It was a little bit small for a four man tent. So, in my opinion, at least. Uh, in the heart of winter. So uh, I reached out to them and they sent me the Ultra, which I'm super grateful for. It's a titanium stove. It uh, packs up and packs down. It's pretty cool. Super light. It's a good sized stove for a four man tent. Let's see how she does tonight. This is the complicated part of doing these stoves for the first time. You gotta do the curly, curly tube. So because this is a titanium stove and we're using it for the first time, we got to burn it in to burn off all the chemicals that were put on it and used in manufacturing process. So we're going to do that now. Oh, 
No. I kept this thing so it's pristine and then I uh, knocked it with my foot and I banged it up. Check it out. I absolutely just demoed the pipe. Maybe I'll just cut it at that point uh, tomorrow when I'm uh, shortening it. Okay, so it's not so bad. All right. Maxim, tell us about your meal. It's a uh, sausage. What's there to say? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you for your time. Thank you for asking. Cheese. Green onions. Salami. The stove is working really well now. We figured out the problem. The spark arrestor at the top was pushed down on it, so it was like a cap on top of the stovepipe, so all that smoke was not going anywhere, and it was coming in here, smoking us out, which is not a good thing. Anyways, my pizza's done, so pretty excited for that. Mm. Marty, what you cooking? We got some pork chops. With some cayenne pepper. Yeah, let's get it nice and toasty in here. Yeah, I like that idea. Uh. Toast it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, la la la. Oh. Having fun. Looking at this last night, I was really intimidated. Having a good night's rest and coming back and looking at it today. Not as nervous. Still a, still a little apprehensive of uh, paddling that little boat. Why are you coming out this way? Go up that way. Okay. Look, no more smoke. We got it figured out. What, what happened was, uh, well, there's your problem, but the spark arrestor was pushed down even f a little bit more again last night, so uh, so it was uh, preventing smoke from getting out of it cleanly. I just pushed it up again. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't get my head wet. All right. That wasn't so bad. Coffee time. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, that is. <laughs> Thanks for uh, making this happen, Marty. That was a good call. Both Xander and I were like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. Back into the dry suit. It's probably about 1:30. We are really late on the day, but uh, we'll be all right, or we won't. So this is the new Fjord dry suit from level six. 
the way dry suits work is it's basically like a onesie from over top of my feet they're like socks that are attached to the pants attached to the top all one piece with gaskets around your wrist and your neck to prevent water from getting in and making you wet these things are essential when you're out in these types of conditions plus it looks pretty cool I made it through with the canoe empty. That's C2, C3. I still feel quite out of control, to be honest. But uh, we'll see what what it's like with the boat loaded, and maybe we'll get it through this day after all. All right, this next rapid is uh, probably the biggest of the whole set for us. This is rifle shoot. I don't know, to be honest. You know, we're running out of time too. Right? I know. The thing with this, the thing with this is that it will fill our boats and we will get wet. And as much as you have dry suits, you only have two uh, an hour left before the sun sets uh, over the horizon and get pretty dark. I ran this two years ago. I ran this last year. I don't think I'm going to run it this year. I don't have uh, the skill in my boat. It's getting late. I, it's much faster for me to portage as opposed to swamp and maybe dump and uh, maybe even something worse happening. It's late in the day. I don't think this one's for me. We have two hours, probably even less than two hours of light left. And I say around 4.30, we're probably not running any rapids. Jesus. I got no control over this thing. This thing performs extremely well in those conditions where it's really tight and maneuverable. Honestly, I, I just went along for the ride. Um, but yeah, it did extremely well in that. It gave me a lot more confidence. All right, let's finish her off, boys. That's the last rapid of the trip. We're still in the boat. That's a success. Great to be at the pullout. That was a bit of a nerve wracking trip. I'll be honest, if this was the summer and I was in patches, my regular canoe that I paddle, I have a lot more confidence. But being in this 12 foot boat here in the beginning of December, a bit of a different experience. Really fun to be out here with my brother Max and Marty Morset. Uh, great guys. They also make YouTube content. Go check their channels out. Link down in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.